Hello everyone, in today's video we'll be talking about the Y Combinator in 10 minutes or less. You might know the name Y Combinator from the startup accelerator that has boosted massive companies like Reddit and Coinbase. However, have you ever wondered where this program got its name? The Y Combinator is a fundamental pillar of functional programming and lambda calculus and it enables recursion. Let's start by talking about what recursion is. Recursion is when a function, like our function f, takes in an input and then calls itself on another value. And it keeps calling itself until it reaches a base case, after which it collapses and finally yields an output value. Let's look at a concrete example of recursion through the factorial function. We can define factorial like so. x factorial is defined as 1 if x is equal to 1, and it's x times x minus 1 factorial if x is greater than 1. Let's see this in action. 5 factorial, as per our rules, can be expanded into 5 times 4 factorial, which can then be expanded like so. When we go to 1 factorial, we have hit our base case, and we've defined 1 factorial as 1. Now we can collapse to get the answer of 120. Here's how that would look like in JavaScript code. To understand the Y Combinator, we need to add some rules to our factorial function. But before we do that, let's rewrite our factorial function using a lambda expression. We can use the ternary operator to get a similar effect as our if statement, where we say if x equals 1, then we return the value 1. Otherwise, we return the value x times the factorial of x minus 1, just like our factorial function should. Now, let's get to the magic rule. The rule is that we can only use parameters of our factorial function inside its own definition. It looks like this rule is already satisfied, since the factorial function only depends on the parameter x we pass in. However, we also use the name factorial inside the factorial function, which isn't a parameter of itself. But that might leave you asking, if we're only allowed to use parameters inside the function definition, how do we call the function inside itself? Does this rule mean that we can't have recursion? Well, let's go back to our code and take a look. First, let's try making our code satisfy a rule. We can add a factorial-like function that takes in two parameters, a function f and our value x. And in the recursive case, we apply f to x minus 1 instead of the function itself. One thing we could try from here is trying to run factorial-like with some function passed in. By some function, I really mean any function. We can have a function that squares a number. We can even have a function that does absolutely nothing. In fact, for the sake of example, let's use this function. Now what happens when we run our test function on the value 1? This will expand into the factorial-like function of our function that does nothing and 1. 1 is equal to 1, so our factorial-like function returns 1, as it should. Test of 1 is equal to 1, which means test works for finding the factorial of 1. Next, let's try applying test to the value 2. We have a similar expansion, except 2 is not equal to 1, so we go to the recursive case. The recursive case gives us 2 times our function applied on 1. But this doesn't make any sense, and it will return not a number. One thing we could try from here is calling factorial-like with itself and our nothing function. Now, when we go to our recursive case, we will call 2 times factorial-like of our nothing function and 1. But this is already something that we tried earlier. This was just test of 1, which gave us 1. So now, test of 2 gives us the correct answer for the factorial of 2, which is 2. However, you could see why we will have a similar issue if we tried running test of 3. In order to fix this, we could consider making an infinite stack of these factorial-like functions. This will let our function work for test of 3 and for all test values afterwards. Now our test function really is the factorial function that we've been looking for. In fact, since it is infinitely recursive, we notice that we contain this infinite stack of factorial likes inside our first factorial like. So factorial really is the factorial like function applied to itself. What we're looking for really is what is called a fixed point of the factorial like function. We want a point such that when we apply factorial like to it, we still get the same point. Now we're really starting to get into what the Y Combinator is at its heart. The Y Combinator is a fixed point finder. It helps us find these fixed points. 
Mathematically, we can define the y combinator as y of f equals f of y of f, just like our fixed point of our factorial-like function. When we expand this, we get the infinite stack of f's that we've been looking for. Let's add this to our code. Here, we've implemented the y combinator in JavaScript, and we've rewritten our factorial function using this y combinator. Let's try running it with factorial of 5, except we get an error. The reason for this error is that we're doing y of factorial like applied to 5, which expands to factorial like of y of factorial like applied to 5, which keeps expanding recursively until we have that infinite recursive call that we wanted to get earlier. The reason this doesn't work is because JavaScript tries evaluating that infinite recursion right away before applying it to the value of 5. However, it's important to note that this infinite recursion does work in languages that are evaluated lazily, like our Haskell example above. Back in JavaScript land though, we can't have this infinite recursion. So what can we do about it? Well, first off, that's not our only issue. Remember our rule that we can only use parameters inside our function? Well, our y combinator implementation breaks that rule because we use y inside its own definition. It looks like we have a few things to fix. So let's start by focusing on the y combinator itself. Before explaining how we could rewrite this to work in JavaScript, I'll give you an opportunity to try to figure it out for yourself. The solution will be available in three, two, and one. On to the solution. One thing we could try is just making a function that recurses another function once. We've written that above as a function that applies x to itself. When we call this function on itself, what do we get? Well, let's expand it and then substitute. When we actually apply this function, we end up with the same function we started with. So this means that test is equal to test. Well, go figure. But this is something quite close to what we're actually looking for. We want test to be equal to f of test. To do so, we can pass in another parameter into our function, f, and then apply f onto its result. Now we get the y combinator style behavior we're looking for. Now, finally, we have found the real y combinator in JavaScript. And voila, we've even satisfied our rule of only using parameters of our function inside our function. Our y combinator doesn't actually call itself anywhere inside it. However, we're forgetting something. When we actually apply this, JavaScript will still try to evaluate this expression right away, and we get the same infinitely recursive issue that we got earlier. So we need to rewrite this so that it's not evaluated right away. To do this, we can treat it as using another parameter z and then just applying that. Now our function is evaluated lazily. However, you might notice that this definition is just a bit ugly. So we can simplify this into a simpler definition that does the same thing. This does the exact same thing and it looks slightly less ugly. It's still not great, but if you've coded in JavaScript, you've probably seen worse. Putting that back into our code, we can finally try running factorial of 5 and we get 120 just like we wanted. After all of this though, you might have a question. Why? I'm sorry, why did we do all of this? Well, it really breaks down to our rule that we can only use parameters of our function inside our function. This rule defines a very special type of function called a pure function, which is a fundamental concept in functional programming. A pure function can be defined simply as a function that doesn't mess with anything it shouldn't. This means that it doesn't use any state from outside of its definition, and it doesn't modify any states inside its definition. It only depends on its parameters, and it doesn't change its parameters' values. Though generally, this will disallow us from calling a function inside of itself, the Y Combinator lets us bypass that and use recursion for these pure functions. Since recursion is an essential part of programming in general, it's also an important part of functional programming. I hope that this video helped clear up some confusions you might have had about what the Y Combinator is, what it does, or how it works. Thank you for watching, and if you found this useful, feel free to leave a like to support my channel. Thank you and goodbye.